The Dread Knights are some of the toughest, strongest, and most intimidating enemies you'll encounter in the board game Hero Quest. But that doesn't mean that painting them has to be intimidating. In this video, I'll show you how to get great results with minimal effort in beginner friendly steps with just a handful of paints. My name's Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and if you've been following along with this speed painting series, you'll know three things by now. Number one, in the very first episode, these models had a little bit of basing material added to them, just simple card cobblestones and sand to look like dirt, and they were primed grey to help our paint stick to the model better. Number two, like in all the other videos, we're going to paint one of the old 80s Hero Quest models, the equivalent to the Dread Knights being the Chaos Warriors, such an iconic, timeless sculpt. And we'll be painting it with the same techniques to show you that, no matter the model, the methods we're going to use together will work on pretty much anything. And number three, you can do this. Even if this is your first time painting a model, all of these speed painting videos are geared to help you start playing your games with fully painted sets. So much more immersive than playing with bare plastic and hugely satisfying to see all your models painted up and knowing that you did that. It's a great feeling. Right then, let's start off with a really simple first step. I'm going to mix together some black wash and black paint to create a really dark stain that will sink into the recesses and make them almost pure black, but also heavily stain all of the surfaces down to a dark grey. Use your biggest brush and just slap this on all over every bit of the mini. You can't really go wrong here. I left the capes out, but you can cover them too if you want to. Now if you get any big pools of paint, try to wick away the excess with a dry brush to stop any weird tide marks developing as it dries. Now go have lunch or grab a coffee or paint some other models in the meantime and wait for this particularly wet stage to dry. And when it does, what we're going to do is grab a basic silvery gunmetal paint and we're going to add a little black paint to that to darken it down to create our first layer of metallic paint. To apply this, we're going to use a method called dry brushing, where we wipe most of the paint off a big brush and then sweep the brush gently back and forth across the model surface. This way, the dark metallic paint we just mixed will only catch the raised surfaces, leaving the dark recesses non-metallic and almost black. You see the difference just that step makes? The armor's looking pretty cool already. Now for the next step, we're just going to use the gunmetal paint on its own, without darkening it down this time, to do a slightly lighter dry brush on the armour panels. But this time we're focusing on the head, the shoulders, arms and chests. Basically from the waist up, ignoring the legs. You want to be drawing attention up to the face of the model really. And be a bit more sparing with your brush strokes than you were with the previous steps too. Once you're happy with that, switch out to your deep midnight blue. Thin it with a tiny bit of water so it flows nicely from the brush, and we're going to use this to base coat the fabric parts of the model. On the modern version, this means the front and back of the cape, and don't be afraid to poke your brush between the legs to get to the inner parts of the cape. We're also going to paint up the little skirty bits around the armor plates dangling at their waists, and also the bit on the tummy. You could leave this as metallic if you want to, but that looks a bit more flexible to me, so I'm going to assume it's fabric too. On the retro model though, the only bit of fabric we can paint with the signature baddie colour that I've chosen is the wrap on his axe handle. Now let's switch out to a brown paint, and being a tiny bit careful here, we're going to paint the staff part of the handles on the axes and mauls. Now if you're painting a retro model too, you could use this brown to paint the glove and the boots too, but let's do something a little bit fancier. By mixing blood red with a teeny tiny touch of black, you can get a really nice ox blood leather colour, which will work perfectly for the dark leather parts of the model. This would also be a really good point to reapply some grey paint to your bases on any areas that were stained by the dark wash we did right at the start, because next we're going to grab our pale, warm, off-white bony colour to do a few different things. First we'll base coat the horns on the warrior's helmets. And after that we're going to do a bit of dry brushing. Using our big bushy brush again and wiping nearly all the paint off, we're going to dry brush a tiny bit over the capes to bring out some of that cool texture, and also on the wraps of the Retro Warriors axe handle too. Now our bases are grey again, we can also apply this to the bases to bring out some texture if you jazz them up like I did before we began. Okay, we're actually almost finished with our basic version. The last step to tie everything together in the grungy, dark dungeon vibes, we'll mix water 
black wash and brown wash together in equal quantities to create a gentle shade to apply all over everything. This will add a bit of a grimy look, settle in the recesses, make darker shadows, and make things just look a little bit more done. As this is drying, give the rims a quick coat or two of black paint, and that's your basic scheme completed. You can call it quits here if you like. These sculpts are very, very forgiving to this quick, speedy dry brush method of painting and will look great on the tabletop. But if you're feeling like you might be a bit more confident with your detail brush and want to add a few extra details, we'll do that right now. First off, thin your pale off-white paint again with a little bit of water and add a few streaks across the width of the horns on the helmet. This extra little painted on detail will really make them look a bit more special. I also like to paint the back two sides of the cobblestones on my bases to make them pop a little bit more as you look down on the pieces while you're playing. Now using the gunmetal paint again, we can tippy tap the end of the brush against some of the most prominent focal points on the armour, like the brow of the helmet, the eyes on the chest armour decoration, the sharpest points on the trim, and softly brushed against the top half of the mean looking shields to bring back a final bit of shine. You can also streak it across the face of the weapons too in a bit more of a rough fashion to make it look like the weapons have been striking on stuff and have fresh cut metal shining through. Now let's grab some brown wash and using a detail brush this time we're going to apply it to areas on the model that are lacking a bit of oomph. Any soft looking areas that you want to darken down a little bit and add a tiny bit of warmth, cracks, crevices, areas between the armour and the fabric, those kind of places will look way better with an extra touch of shade. I also painted the bottom half of all of the cloaks too. Now going back to our blood red paint, let's have a little bit of fun and get a little drop on the end of our big bushy brush we used to dry brush the armour and other bits like that before, but this time we're going to pull back the bristles, aim them at the weapons, and letting the bristles flick back it'll splatter some red onto the weapons uh, and the surrounding areas too, and obviously this looks like blood splatter. Be sure to put some paper down under your models if you're precious about the table you're painting on. Now I didn't do this for every model, just a couple to make it look like they've seen some action already. These are some of the deadliest foes you'll face in HeroQuest after all. You can add a teeny tiny bit of black to the red to make it look like dried blood if you prefer, and once you're happy with the splats, you can use a detail brush to guide the splats into more realistic streaks and pools if you want to. You can even mix dry blood and fresh blood, go nuts. And after those few extra steps, I reckon they look pretty awesome. Dark, brooding, menacing, violent, everything you want from a Dread Knight or a Chaos Warrior. If you've been following along, you'll know we're so close to being finished with the set now. Just the abominations, the bosses, and the heroes still to go. Now please hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video, and subscribe so you don't miss the rest of the series. Check out the description for links to other videos in the series, as well as alternatives to all the paints I listed in the video too, and thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.